Even if the Earth runs out of oil and gas and a dense veil of smog plunges the world into darkness, we will still have electricity to charge smartphones and film the beginning of the end. There is at least one invention that could change the world of inexhaustible energy sources. Floating turbines that use the energy of flowing tides. Have you heard of this? Meanwhile, the first of such plant has already started generating electricity off the coast of Scotland. And so far, in the event of the apocalypse, the Scots have one less cause for concern. There is a common misconception that the sun is the only source of renewable energy. But why does everyone forget about the colossal impact that the moon has on the Earth? The daily ebb and flow are its handiwork, so to speak. Imagine what a powerful movement of water masses is formed under the action of tidal force in sea straits, around capes, and at the mouths of rivers flowing into the ocean. These are the places that become ideal locations for installing tidal turbines that convert colossal kinetic energy into electric current. It is worth noting that attempts to use tidal energy were made in antiquity. It is known for certain that in the Middle Ages, people living in Europe and the Middle East built tidal mills, which were powered by the movement of water during high and low tides. By the middle of the 12th century, such structures dotted the entire western coast of Europe, from Holland to Spain. And with the opening of the New World, tidal mills appeared in America. However, it was only in the 20th century that tidal energy began to be used in full force. The first power plant of this type was built on the French bank of the English Channel at the mouth of the Rance River. The place was not chosen by chance. The difference in water levels here reaches 13 meters, and the speed of the tidal currents can exceed 90 kilometers per hour. In 1967, after six years of construction, the grandiose structure was completed. It included power units, navigation locks, release locks, and a dam. Inside the dam, there were 24 turbo alternators that functioned both as turbines and as pumps. By the way, 11 years after the launch of the facility in 1978, calculations showed that the electricity produced by the station on Rance was cheaper than the electricity generated by nuclear reactors. This quickly put an end to discussions that huge investments in the construction of such stations will never pay off. No less success in the development of tidal energy was achieved by Soviet engineers, who in 1968 built a prefabricated power plant in Murmansk and towed it tens of kilometers away to Kislyaya Guba, located in the Barents Sea. Here, in the mouth of the bay, the station was flooded and built on with prefabricated sections of the dam. The Soviet experiment confirmed the possibility of building tidal stations remotely, many kilometers from their permanent deployment. The last great success in this regard was demonstrated by the Orbital Marine Power Scottish Company, which in 2021 completed the construction of the most powerful floating tidal turbine in the world. Almost $300 million was spent on this project. The idea of creating an environmentally friendly and predictable energy solution came to the founders of Orbital Marine Power in the mid-2000s. Then, a team of Scottish engineers set out to contribute to the fight against climate change and personally support the global transition from fossil fuels to inexhaustible energy sources. It took the Orbital Marine Power team more than 15 years to complete the project. During this time, they assessed the prospects for the use of tidal energy, created a prototype of a fundamentally new power plant, found investors, got the support of the British government, and ultimately built not just a prototype, but an operating floating station that is safe for the environment. Most of the time the engineers spent on the design of the floating installation, they needed not only to design the structure of the station from scratch, but also to solve the issue of its transportation from the assembly shop to the installation site on the high seas. Considerable difficulties arose with how to lock a multi-ton object in the street with a strong current. For this purpose, heavy-duty chains with anchors were specially developed for the project. In 2021, after 18 months of active construction and commissioning, the first Orbital O2 station was completed. 680 tons of metal, 72 meters in length, blades with a span of 10 meters. The UK as well as the whole world has not yet seen such a monster. At the end of April this year, the station departed from the port of Dundee to its permanent anchorage in the strait between the Orkney Islands, 16 kilometers northeast of the coast of Scotland. For transportation, tractors and tugs were involved, 
which in just a few hours by land and water, towed this miracle of engineering to the target site. The unit on the water is held in a stationary position by chains anchored to the seabed. Two wings, at the ends of which two blade turbines are installed, are attached to the pontoon. With the help of hydraulic cylinders, the turbines are lowered into the water at an angle of 45 degrees. Under the influence of tidal currents, the blades are set in motion. This generates electricity, which is fed through the submarine cable to the local onshore power grid. According to Orbital Marine Power's calculations, such a plant has the capacity to supply electricity to 2,000 households. At the same time, the station operating at full capacity is able to prevent more than 2,200 tons of carbon dioxide from entering the atmosphere per year. This is fully consistent with the British plans to reduce carbon dioxide emissions into the atmosphere. By the way, in 2019, renewables in the UK generated more electricity for the first time than fossil fuel, such as coal, oil, and gas power stations. And in the past 10 years, green electricity production in the United Kingdom has more than quadrupled. With the support of the British government, Orbital Marine Power plans to start mass production of such stations. And according to the experts, the launch of the first O2 floating tidal turbine opens a new page in the use of inexhaustible energy sources, with several reasons for this. Firstly, O2 is designed in such a way that simple tugs and boats can be used to transport and install it. This significantly reduces the time and costs involved in its installation and operation. Secondly, a floating tidal station does not require the construction of a powerful dam. It is mobile, much cheaper, and takes several months to build. Thirdly, the O2 project does not have a negative impact on the environment. It does not interfere with water exchange and does not cause significant harm to the marine flora and fauna. In addition, unlike solar panels, stations of this type are able to provide energy regardless of weather conditions, since tidal currents are cylindrical and predictable. The O2 Tidal Floating Turbine Project proves that even a cumbersome industry such as the Power One can undergo significant changes in the near future. And alternative energy sources have every chance of becoming a new catalyst for technological progress. At least the efforts of British engineers are yielding tangible results even today.